Hello everyone and welcome to the final round of the Norway Chess 2021. We have a very, very interesting game between Jani Pomnici and Magnus Carlsen and this is already the Armageddon. The classical game ended in a fairly quick draw. Uh, it was a nice Joko Piano. Of course, if Nepo uh, had went for the uh, Evans Gambit, things might have been a bit different. But of course, uh, we can't just uh, Gambit everything on that uh, one game. So now we have the Armageddon. Uh, Nepo needs a win with White. Magnus uh, only needs a draw uh, to win the match. Nepo has 10 minutes o'clock magnus seven let's see what happens uh with the white pieces nepo opens with e4 we have e5 by magnus and the knight to c3 going for the vienna game uh, knight to c6 and now not the immediate f4 but first bishop to c4 uh, we have knight to f6 and now d3 defending the, the pawn one more time also preparing to develop the light uh, the dark square bishop we have knight to a5 attacking nepo's bishop on c4 bishop to b3 and magnus captures on b3 we have a captures on b3 and now uh, striking in the center with d5 so we have a trade, e captures, knight captures, and now we have a queen to h5 saying, okay, I'm threatening to capture the, the pawn on e5, it's undefended, uh, what do you play? Uh, Magnus says, uh, you uh, have that pawn, I'm just going to play knight to b4 and threaten knight captures on c2 with check. So Nepo captures it, we have queen captures on e5 with check, and now just the bishop to e7. So uh, straight out pawn sacrifice for Magnus right out of the opening. Uh, we have queen back to e2. Uh, and now comes castles. You don't want your queen uh, to be anywhere, you know, deep into the game. And also you have to have the C2 pawn defended. Uh, and now there is one game where Vasily Manchuk defeated Chadaev in 2012 World Blitz final, uh, where queen to D1 was played uh, by Manchuk. But here uh, we have uh, bishop to E3. And it is now uh, only as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. Uh, makes sense you want to continue development uh, and also uh, rook to e8 is coming so this bishop will come in handy here so this is exactly what magnus plays knight to f3 preparing castles and now just a5 cementing this knight here on b4 uh, we have h3, preventing bishop to g4, and now b6 by Magnus. Magnus uh, has the bishop pair. He sacrificed the pawn, but the bishop pair will be very nice compensation. So castles, and now bishop to b7. Uh, we have rook a to c1 now. Now you will be able to move the knight and then start advancing these pawns. Uh, so bishop to f6, and now d4. Uh, and uh, here, uh, what do you do? Uh, well, the, the bishop pair is definitely better, uh, white is up a pawn, but it's not easy to play, <laughs> and uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's so much better that uh, Magnus even avoids playing bishop to a6. Now, I don't know if this is a blunder, if he missed this, uh, because who amongst us would not play this, or do they just both agree that the light square bishop is just such a monster of a piece that it's, uh, you know, it, it would be pointless to give it up for, for this rook that's doing pretty much nothing on f1. So, uh, the engine very much enjoys this but for uh, such a quick game maybe maybe the bishop is to be preferred or it was a case of mutual blindness uh, we don't know until we uh, see at least uh, an interview with um, one of them but okay rook f to d1 Nepo now uh, sorry <laughs> not bishop to a6 uh, we have queen to d7 now by magnus just continuing development uh, and now uh, rook f to d1 so now maybe nepo spotted it maybe not maybe he just wants to get the knight out of the way play c4 d5 and so on so rook a to d8 and now queen to b5 nepo is now ready to trade queens and then he wants to have some sort of an end game uh, where he moves the knight and start push starts pushing this uh, uh, c pawn and d pawn so queen to c8 magnus avoids the trade but nepo uh, very resourcefully finds a way on how to achieve it still so queen to h5 now you might run into some trouble here uh, if knight to g5 you might give up uh, you might have to give up the, the bishop uh, so maybe not something to, to go for uh, so instead we have h6 but now queen to g4 and now you have to trade queens uh, there's really nothing better to do also ideas like bishop captures and h6 are in the position so here magnus just trades this doubles nepo's um uh, well, h to g pawn now, uh, and rook to d7. Now he wants to double up on the d pile and put some pressure on the d4 pawn. So rook to d2 by Nepo, and now g5 by Magnus. We have knight to d1, and rook d back to d8. Uh, we have c3 now chasing away this knight, knight to d5, and knight to h2. Uh, we have king to g7, bringing the king into the game, knight to f1, and now king to g6 by Magnus. So yes, this is how deep into the game you have to bring your king for maximum activity. We have f3, 
Uh, and now h5. Magnus now wants to open up the h file. Maybe he can get some action along uh, the h file if he doubles rooks here. Maybe, you know, good things might happen. So g captures an h5. King captures an h5. And now comes bishop to f2. King to f2 also may be a possibility. Uh, but he wants to play fast. Magnus is down to some two and a half minutes on the clock. Nepo some five minutes on the clock. And Magnus just goes back. King to g6. Uh, we have knight d to e3. And now bishop back to e7. Now the bishop can be shifted over to uh, maybe d6. Uh, we have knight captures on d5. Bishop captures on d5. And now c4. So now Nepo will start expanding his pawn structure here in the center. Bishop back to e6. d5 now. But now before reacting to this, Magnus first um, throws in a nice vision suit. Attacks the rook here. So rook back to d1 and now bishop back to d7. We have knight to e3 and now we have f5 grabbing more space here. And now you can start pushing f4 and g4. Knight to c2 uh, puts pressure on the bishop here. And Magnus, of course, saves it. Uh, he didn't sacrifice a pawn to just give up the bishop pair like this. And now the bishops are almost optimally placed. The pawns are ready to be pushed. And if the rooks um, become operational as well. Uh, good things might happen, but that's an if, and Nepo still up a pawn. Uh, so here we have knight to d4, uh, and now comes g4 by Magnus. We have g3 by Nepo, and now you could go with f4 and create some absolute chaos here, but maybe it's a bit too complicated to go into with so little time on the clock. So Magnus goes for this uh, uh, g captures on f3. It's uh, much easier to, uh, to just see everything because the knight now captures, and then you gain this e2 square for your rook, so knight captures on f3. Three, rook to e2 and now rook to d2 going for the trade magnus of course captures we have captures captures and the rook to e8 now the other rook wants to come to e2 so rook to d1 also rook to e1 possible but uh Nepo needs a win so trading the other pair of rooks as well uh he he kind of well, he, he's not going to get that win. So f4 by Magnus. Uh, and now we trade uh, this last pawn on the king side. G captures, bishop captures, and now knight to f3. Uh, and now the rook is here nicely giving support to this pawn. But it's very hard to create something here because these pawns are nicely controlling these pawns. Uh, so rook to, uh, sorry, rook to e2. Uh, just nicely going after that b2 pawn. Uh, and now comes bishop to d4. Just uh, defending the pawn. And what does Magnus do here? He plays bishop to g4 it's a very nice move attacks the knight and also kind of x-rays that rook on d1 so here we have rook to f1 defending the knight and now the position is so close to winning but you have to play a very precise move here so feel free to pause the video and try to find this idea while i give you a couple of seconds while i check out a uh, check up on the on the rapport versus Firuja game So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on, uh, well, always uh, bringing your king deeper into the game. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's, of course, king to f5. And, uh, of course, you guys found this because you are uh, great endgame players. Uh, and now we're threatening uh, just captures, rook captures, and then we can bring our king over to uh, d uh, e4 with an attack on the rook and on the bishop. So what do you play here? Well, the kind of the, the strongest defense here is just rook f2, but it's still it's still ugly. Rook captures on f2. Now you have to deliver this knight to h4 check and then king to e4. Not going after the knight because the bishop captures rook defends the knight. So here we have to go for activity. Bishop captures on f2 and now bishop to d1. And now we are going to be very happy here grabbing those pawns and the black should have a winning advantage. But Nepo tried the active d6 move uh, and uh, he, it seems that he kind of scared Magnus because Magnus uh, played C captures on D6 when in fact you have to go for King to E4 and it's pretty much the same idea the Knight is attacked twice the Bishop hangs uh, and whatever you play let's say Knight to E5 we still win the piece captures 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 and now this is nothing because the Bishop covers the Queening square you don't have anything here with white so, but uh, Nepo managed to trick Magnus somehow uh, and Magnus played uh, just C captures on D6 he of course uh, enjoys his position still it's a, it's a much better position so not even this is a problem and probably he didn't want to waste uh, time uh, calculating because yes they've reached time 40 they do get additional time for every move but it's only one second so here we have bishop captures on b6 and now bishop captures on f3 again king to e for the absolute strongest but here bishop captures on f3 was played Rook captures and now rook captures on b2. We have bishop to d4 attacking Carlson's rook. Now rook to b1 check. King to f2. 
and now finally king to e4. Uh, we have bishop to g7, getting this bishop out of the way, uh, but now the position is winning for Magnus as now there is a very specific trick in the position. So feel free to pause the video and win the game for Magnus while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that, uh, yes, the white king is in the mating web, uh, and if uh, uh, he doesn't uh, wish to get checkmated, he will have to give up the rook. Of course, white doesn't want to do neither. So rook to h1, congratulations to everyone who found this. You are, uh, once again, a, a spectacular endgame player. And now the threat is the simple rook to h3 check. We're going to have to step back from the defense of our rook on f3, and that's it. The king captures rook, and it's game over. So rook to c3 the only square available to this rook but it's not a problem rook to h2 with check we have king to f1 king to g1 is more precise but uh, now this is you know uh, it's armageddon everything is more precise so bishop to e3 now uh, just going for this king to f3 and then it will be impossible to defend against checkmate tempo played c5 d captures on c5 rook to c4 check king to f3 and it was in this position on move 56 that yanni ponishi resigned the game and a uh, victory for magnus carlsen in the armageddon which now means uh, that uh, magnus is the winner of um, uh, of the tournament uh, rapport could have i believe equalized with points but uh, uh well i don't want to spoil anything for you as uh, the game is still going on perhaps uh and i'm going to cover the, that game next uh, so we're going to discuss that but yeah uh like 99 percent magnus won the tournament we'll see what happens but yeah after king to f3 nepo resigned uh as there is nothing more to be done here rook to h1 will be checkmate and there's no way to stop this there's there, there's really no way uh, so yeah, that's the game. Armageddon, as always, is cruel. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Uh, I would like to thank, uh, or rather wish a happy birthday to Matthew Tebut. I uh, would like to thank uh, Felipe Giorgio, uh, Dimitri Samsonov, John Dugdale, and uh, author Fun Faceoff for your contribution uh, to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the uh, Firuja Rapport game, as I know you guys are expecting that one. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.